All right, a very good morning once again and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one breakfast show in the country. Morning at NTV, we take pride in the fact that we lose sleep on a daily basis to ensure that we acquaint you with that number one information that you need to actually transform your lives. International Day for Older Persons shall be taken center stage on 1st October. That'll be pretty much be a Friday. And of course, I'm here with the representatives of the elderly within the country in their different capacities. I do have Henry Kalule. Mr. Henry Kalule is the board chairperson of the Interreligious Council Uganda. Well, he did retire at some point. He shall explain to you what that really means. But then we also do have Frank Bafuma. Mr. Frank Bafuma, he is the executive director for Synergy Elderly Care. We want to talk about uh, this SAGE program, the Socio Assistance uh, Grants for Empowerment. That is the money that is being accorded to those uh, individuals who are 60 years and older for Karamoja region and also 80 years and older for the entire region. It's only um, Karamoja that was excluded or that saw that age being reduced. But then we shall also take a look at the plight of people, all the elderly that have, that have been grappling under this COVID-19 pandemic. This social assistance uh, for uh, for this social assistance for, uh, grant for empowerment has been coming in very, very late. It's only 25,000 Uganda shillings. It's one thing that the money is little and it's another that the money is always super delayed. So when it comes to these individuals, it's actually not enough. You and I know that very well that health in this country has been overly privatized, meaning it is super, super expensive. Many of these healthcare facilities charge exorbitant fees. So if I'm getting 25,000 courtesy of the SAGE program, how much of it am I going to put for food? How much am I going to put aside for healthcare in that regard? So all the persons, the generation is actually grappling and we need to come to their rescue, just, as, just like other people whom we are actually touting to actually get help right here on Morning at NTV. Henry Kalule and Frank Bavoma join me right now. Very good morning. Good morning. All right. Um, let's kick off uh, with the International Day of Older Persons. Generally, how does Uganda celebrate this day? Let me start with you, Mr. Bavoma. Ah, thank you, Romeo, for the opportunity mm. to, on the morning show. One, the elder, the International Day for the Elder Person, as it were, was commemorated on the 1990s mm. by the UN Assembly. And so they declared the 1st of October every year as a special day when these special old persons should be recognized mm. because of the many things that they have mm. done. All of us know that in this country, we are, the, the, the elderly people are 4.1% mm. of the total population. But the level of impact that they put on the rest of us is enormous. Indeed. So this is something that we want to call upon the Ugandan population to embrace, celebrate, and we, we want to share with you how you yourself here and the rest of the people that are seeing us should celebrate this day. Hmm. That is why we are here, Romy. Indeed. How many, bit of, uh, how many uh, elderly people do we have in this country? Uh, apparently, we, we have one, approximately to 1.5 million. 1.5 million elderly people within yes. this country. Yes. And guess how many are beneficiaries of this SAGE program? A little, nearly 10,000, but around 7,400. Exactly. Meaning more people are not being reached out with, uh, to actually benefit from this SAGE program. Exactly. And the money. exactly, and something that needs to come out clearly mm. is that um, whereas we have 1.5 million uh, people mm. that are categorized 60 and above, mm. because when you talk about the elder in this country, we are talking about the age of 60 and above. So if you are in that category, then you qualify to be in this. But the SAGE program in many of the districts of this country mm. is looking at uh, 80 years and above. Indeed. So they are quite a number like you're saying, mm. that have been have not yet benefited from this. Mm. All right, I also do have Mr. Henry Kalule. He is the board chairperson for the Interreligious Council Uganda. He's going to be letting us in on some of the challenges that have befallen the elderly people during this very heinous pandemic. Yes, Mr. Henry Kalule, very good morning and thank you for joining us. Mm, good morning and good morning viewers. Uh, just a little correction. I served uh, as a board chair of Interreligious Council of mm. Uganda uh, in the past for eight years, mm. but I've retired from that, and now I'm a senior citizen. Indeed. My service has been mainly in church circles, mm. Seven Adventist Church, the Bible Society of Uganda, Indeed. and Interreligious Council of Uganda. Indeed. 
And uh, as a senior citizen... As a senior citizen, how old are you now, <laughs> Mr. Henry Kalori? I'm 65. You're 65, five so you years, are... Five years beyond, beyond the threshold. You are eligible for the <laughs> Socio <laughs> Assistance Grant for Empowerment. Yeah, sir. Sure, but uh, I'm disqualified yes. because uh, maybe the budget is, uh, is can't afford mm. it. Or maybe as a nation, we need to do a little more than mm. we're doing now. So in Kampala here, you're mm. disqualified, but when you go to Karamoja, maybe you qualify. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I should relocate to Karamoja. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Yeah. Uh, we uh, Elderly people have mm. a lot of challenges. Indeed. But they always keep a smile, the, like it, yourself. Oh, of, of course, you, you have to. Indeed. Otherwise, the problems may weigh on you, Indeed. and uh, you may reduce your lifespan. It's for, stress for is a key like just like the exactly. pandemic. Mm. But the biggest challenge is mainly in the health area. Indeed. At uh, that point in time, you are becoming weaker, and uh, many diseases find it easier to attack you. I see. And unfortunately, at that point, uh, you can't care much about yourself, and people who should have cared ab uh, about you also have their own challenges. Mm -hmm. Uh, the institutional help through insurance is also becoming limited at that age. Mm. They are scared of uh, insuring a person who is 65, 70, 72. Oh, they are scared of insuring you because yes, of the you're, risk? you're not very good business. I see. Um, but there uh, is someone who wants to circumvent <laughs> that risk. GA Insurance. Yes. They came into the market, yeah. I think, this week on Monday, and they want to insure the risky population, the elder. I, I Isn't need, that good news? I, I need to look at what they offer, mm. but they should understand and appreciate that mm. my need as 65, 70, Seventy pass, oh, yes. person mm -hmm. are quite different from the needs mm -hmm. of uh, a young person who is 30, 20, uh, 45. Mm -hmm. And they need to tailor the package in such a way mm -hmm. that it fits with us. Now, let me uh, tell you, um, I know that uh, insurance is a business. Indeed. I don't expect them to participate in something where they are going to make losses. I see. But this is where I call in the government mm. to look at the elder as a special group mm. and also work with insurers to be able to uh, provide sufficient care mm. for the, that age group. Uh, let me give, give you a, a, an example. It's not good business in insurance mm. uh, to insure, uh, agro-insurance is not good business. Uh, go ahead. And uh, many insurance companies have been avoiding it. But the government came in to assist and support these insurance companies to be able to offer uh, meaningful insurance covers to mm. people in agribusiness. Mm. They should be able to come in also to offer and uh, encourage and support insurance companies to give a meaningful cover, uh, health covers to elderly people. There should be a, a, a policy that should be able to, uh, to, to cover that. Mm -hmm. And that would be a great relief to many. Indeed. Because if I have a mother who is 88, and uh, she can be able to be covered by an, a good insurance uh, policy, and I can pay in that, and uh, then I'm assured that she'll get the medical service she needs mm. at any time. Mm. They are specialized in most cases. You don't simply go to a, 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 a general doctor. You, it's, uh, it, it is several, multiple. Mm. I need a specialist, I need this one. Indeed. I'm a diabetic, I have a problem with the back, I have a problem with the, my eyes, I have so many things at the mm. same time. So you need a special cover for the elderly. It's not the general one. Indeed. And maybe you may not be thinking of uh, great profits mm. in covering that kind of age group. Mm. But if you have an encouragement from the government, uh, and it's a policy that the government can support and encourage insurance mm. companies to offer these good sub, uh, uh, policies to elderly, that would be very helpful. Uh, away from the insurance companies, gov government is doing something on its part. They did introduce the search program, so assistance grant for empowerment, 25,000 Uganda shillings being accorded to the elderly people. Do you think this money is sufficient to help you navigate the challenges brought about by COVID-19? Well, it's uh, simply a good gesture, hmm. but it's nothing. I hear you. You're talking about 25,000 a month. Hmm. And even if it is simply painkillers to leave the pain in my knee, hmm. if they're going to be good painkillers, yes. that's not sufficient to take me for a week. 
because once in a while I may need an injection or something Indeed. that may cost me uh, uh, 20,000. And uh, good treatment goes with good nutrition. E e exactly. And uh, what do I get from that mm. to provide me with the good nutrition to cover up my condition that is being uh, eaten up Indeed. so that uh, I, I recover it? Uh, what does that help me mm. with my vitamin A content so that my eyes can uh, can continue? I hear you. Okay. There's so many things that we, we, mm -hmm. we really need. Mm. 25,000 uh, other than being a good gesture is, is really nothing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that if it, since it is limited to a small portion of this age, 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 age bracket, mm. I think should have been improved a little more than that. All right. Because you're not covering the indeed. whole population of uh, 60, 60 to, to, to whatever. Yeah. Mm. Only Karamoja 60 to 65 and the entire country 80 years it and is, above. Yeah. We yeah. do have Frank Bavuma, the executive director of Synergy Orderly Care. We would like to know what kind of uh, help, what kind of recommendations, measures you've put in place away from government, but as you, Synergy Order Care, what kind of measures have you put in place to accord some kind of help to the elderly people to alleviate the challenges that have uh, actually uh, been affecting them during this COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you, Romeo. Um, we know that in the developed countries, they yes, have right. homes for the elderly. Indeed. In our country, that's not sufficient. It's not good for us. We want this grand, uh, grand but, but by sufficient, you might actually mm. entail that we have some homes, but we do not have any homes. Ac of we actually have some private homes here. Well, yeah, of government. Not, we, don't, we don't have they, any. They are not owned by the government. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have some private ones, mm. and a few people who can afford mm. uh, take their people there. But I want to also say that they are very expensive, mm. extremely expensive. So even the and private run elderly exactly homes are not sufficient. Because but they, they are, are none from government. They are none, nice. and, and they are very expensive because these are profit making mm. also. Mm. But it's something that we want to promote and we continue to promote yes, and we right. want to, to, to appeal to the community to promote and the government is we want to take care of the elderly person in their communities. In their communities. Not to take and them to the elderly homes? Not, not. It doesn't work in our setting. Mm. One is that me and you know this old person mm. because he used to encourage us. We used to eat their mangoes and Indeed. something like that. Indeed. So when you go to visit this place where you grew up from, it's incumbent upon you to go and visit this old person. And so what we are doing as Synergy Elderly Care mm. is to empower and build the capacity of the caretakers. Mm. Me and you know that many of them are living with either a grandchild, um, someone, maybe a child who went for marriage and failed at some point. And came back those are home. the people, mm. exactly, those are the people that they are staying with. So our approach is to empower those individuals, build their capacity, because these people are sick, these people are complaining all, all the time. So we build their capacity to ensure that they make the life of this old person as comfortable as possible. Well, of course, by far, that is a futuristic uh, uh, move or recommendation that you are yeah, planning yeah, to look sure. at. But currently, you are actually helping private uh, run elderly homes with some kind of funding to do their work. How are you doing that? Um, currently, we, we don't, actually, we don't advocate for that approach. But what we do mm. for people who have their, because you find older people that are in their homes and they have nothing that they can Mm. There is no way they can be helped. Mm. So we encourage people who can afford to take these people, instead of abandoning them in their homes, take them to this specialized home. Mm. We actually link them. We identify the home, mm. then get to the caretakers, or they should be caretakers, and then they move them. Thank further. you, Frank. Mr. Yeah. Kalule, does having political representation help the challenges facing the elderly? It is just starting, mm. and uh, we are yet to see how it's going to help. Mm. But I believe that um, uh, if they cared enough to know what the challenges mm. are facing, what challenges are facing the elderly, mm. they should be able to advocate at policy level. Uh, for example, I've been talking about a government subsidizing insurance, medical insurance covers for Indeed. the elderly. Uh, if they can run that and uh, impress upon the government through the parliament, they could be very helpful. So this is a good. But also, I see that representative should be also come down further. If a woman are represented in a special way on mm. LC1, mm. why not the elderly? Mm. Who takes care about the needs of the elderly at LC level, LC1 level, LCT level? 
I think we need also to take that representation further down because it is a group that uh, needs a lot of attention. All right. Yeah. Henry Kalule, yes, he is the former board chairperson for the Interreligious Council, now fully a retired senior citizen, right here on Morning Attentive and to you too, the proprietor of Synergy Orderly Care, Frank Bafuma, thank you too for having made the time to speak to no us worries. ahead of the International Day of Order Person. Biggest recommendation, the government needs to create more elderly homes, yes, for the elderly population so that they could alleviate most of the challenges that have affected them during this COVID-19 pandemic. Also increase the money according to the SAGE program so that they could also cover their health challenges. You're still watching Morning at NTV. We have another conversation that is largely banking on socio-protection.